When you think about film directors, what is the first word that comes to your mind? Chances are, it's action. 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 And action. It's like the most iconic word in the filmmaking jargon, something we associate with making movies. There's sort of also this tradition behind it, like this is the way they've always done it. But what are the reasons for that? Should we keep using it? Or maybe it's in the best interest of shaping great stories that we forget this word. Let it find its place in the history books. It really depends on the actors that you're working with. At the end of the day, it's all about getting the best possible performances out of the actors. Hey, it's Piotr. I'm a simple guy from Poland who graduated in civil engineering, but now aspires to have an international film editing career. On this channel, I'm sharing my journey and my limited knowledge about the editing art form. Wanna help me out? Just like the video. I'm asking for nothing else, just a simple like. So have you ever called action? My first directorial experience was in early 2015, when I made an experimental video about music styles reflected in women's makeup. It felt great to have that creative control. But I remember very specifically that while I wanted to call action and my small three-person crew expected me to do it, I felt awkward saying that magic word. So recently I asked a few of my friends from different facets of the filmmaking world about what they think about calling action. We'll get to it in a moment, but first I owe you an explanation why I even bothered to question such well-established industry jargon. A few months ago I was listening to the Director's Cut podcast with one of my favorite filmmakers ever, Clint Eastwood. And it turns out he doesn't use action at all. I never use action. I guess Tom Hanks will explain it better than I ever could. Other movies, they, they make a big deal about action. You know, all right, let's start it up. Get ready, everybody. We're rolling. We're rolling. Are we rolling? We're rolling. Rolling. We are rolling, people. And everybody, stand by. And... Action! <laughs> that, that's what most movies are. Uh -huh. <laughs> All right. um, Clint, Clint goes like this, and everybody else goes like this. <laughs> which means you're rolling, and then he's standing right next to you, and he says, okay, go ahead. <laughs> What's the deal? Why did that come from? And he said... When he was doing Rawhide, he had all these old movie directors who just loved the megaphones and the attention. He and all the other cast of Rawhide <laughs> are on their horses, and they're supposed to do something. They have a conversation. And that whole build-up to action would make the horses go like <laughs> Being an editor, I can read actors' state of mind to a certain degree. And I know I've seen situations where actors started acting but their mind wasn't really there yet. Because I'm really interested in all stages of filmmaking, I decided to investigate the topic to decide on how I'm gonna handle it in the future myself. What's it like working with Clint? He treats us like horses. <laughs> in his book, Making Movies, Sidney Lumet, a director of one of my favorite movies ever, 12 Angry Men, describes each step of the Hollywood filmmaking system. This is what he has to say about action. The operator nods to me. I call action, just like in the movies. We've reached the moment of truth. My call in action says it all. Internal action, external action, perform, do. Acting is active, it's doing. Acting is a verb. So while it looks like Sidney Lumet doesn't care in the same way like Clint Eastwood does, it's actually not the case, as you are about to find out. By the way, in two weeks, we're starting a new series on this channel called The Book Club. You know, it will be about filmmaking books. Stay tuned. But to further investigate the topic, I decided to talk to a few heroes of mine and definitely more experienced and accomplished filmmakers. And I asked all of them one question. How do you think the word action on set actually affects the performance of actors? Have you noticed anything in that approach? Because some directors don't do it. Some directors will just say, whenever you're ready. Action can create some form of stress. Random people just, you know, they want to hear that big cue. They want to know, you know, that's the go. And action. When they call action, like you get all like, jittery and nervous and like, are you ready? Are you prepared? I'll say action when I'm in the scene, but then with other actors, I'll usually say whenever you're ready. I'll be like, okay, cool, rolling. Okay, great. All right, cool. Uh, Keith, whenever you're ready. I love that somebody will say whenever you're ready. Uh, I think that feels really respectful and very collaborative for an actor. It's not like, P.S., you have to be ready on my word. It's, hey, I know that this is a lot of work and I know that you're getting there and that you're doing your thing. You take the moment and when you're ready to roll, we'll already be rolling. You just go for it. 
that feels super respectful of like my process and what I'm doing. For me, I, I think I try to see action with the intent of the emotion of the scenes. Because the actors sort of get into the moment before they start performing. Prior to action, you have all of this little time to set up like going through your emotional memories, like everything that you've created. If you're doing a big action scene and you have multiple cameras, big stunts, you know, you probably want to be really loud so everyone knows the cue. So that's probably accurate to the emotion if there is of that scene. I think that I also have a lot of respect for people who want to try something different. Also, if you're doing a very you know intimate emotional thing, you can say action very softly, very gently to let the actor know it's happening. Or at times I've said in moments like that, whenever you're ready, you have to read the room. For the end of The Wolf of Snow Hollow, Will Madden and I in the kitchen, and it would just be like me looking at the at Natalie Kingston, the cinematographer and the sound team, be like, <laughs> and then going into the scene, and that's it. And then it feels so much more, you're like battling somebody in a game of chess, and it feels so much more organic. But I've seen a little bit of everything, as far as an AD calling it, a director calling it, you know, an actor calling their own cue, or people saying whenever you're ready, or people saying action, or go, 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 or whatever it is. But relatively, it's kind of the same thing. It's probably something that, as a director, you need to be aware of, and see how it sort of throws your actors at the beginning of a scene. And if it does, then maybe you change it. Do you know that there is even a legend explaining why we call action? One day a director, D.W. Griffith, got quite upset about how slowly things moved from one setup to another. He was short on time and in his frustration he shortened a regular exchange of confirmation sentences and just screamed out LIGHTS to get the electricians to set up the lights, followed by CAMERA! to get the cameraman cranking, yes, it's an old story, and finally followed by action to let the actors know that they should do their thing. Actually, it makes a lot of sense. We couldn't really say start or begin, because it would be confusing as to what should start or begin. Also, the word action itself starts with a vowel, which makes it easy to scream out loud. But even very long ago, there were directors wanting to spice things up a little bit. For example, some Fuller sometimes fired his pistol to give actors much needed cue. Why yelling when you can use the technology to do the job, right? Interestingly, I think there are situations where the gun is actually a good idea. If there is a running jet engine next to the camera. They still do it in the Olympics, after all. German directors, on the other hand, usually say bitte, which means please, as in please go ahead. He always said please. Bitte in German. Okay, confession time. Working on that video, I questioned myself a few times. Is it really a topic you want to make a 10 minute long video about? Do most people find it eccentric and unnecessary to deviate from calling action? Justin Robinson, whose opinion I value greatly, said himself that this is not an area he's interested in changing status quo. Those are things that don't really interest me in trying to change. There's a lot about filmmaking, a lot about directing, a lot about editing, a lot about acting that I love to challenge the status quo and maybe change a little bit. So I would say I probably fall into the other categories of where I would do something different. Most the directors know what they do, but as an editor I deal with what I get from a director. So it is my problem as well. And actually talking to these more experienced colleagues of mine, I came to a conclusion that just having that conversation is already valuable. We treat action as something default. And that's fine as long as you understand that you can change it depending on the circumstances. For some scenes it makes a lot of sense, but for both physically demanding or emotionally intimate, it doesn't. And the director or first AD can just say, you know, on your own cue. Saying something like whenever you're ready allows the actor to begin on their own turns while the cameras roll and wait. What else can a director do to respect the emotional state of the actors? My buddy Danny Madden, when he directs, doesn't use a clapboard. You don't need to have that interruption like in front of an actor's face to clap something. 70 Apple, take three, park. Interestingly, Sidney Lumet makes a very similar point just before he writes about calling action. I'm so aware of the actor's concentration. I will sometimes call for end sticks instead. I don't want that loud clap to disturb him at the beginning of the take. I find that slating it at the end of the take is useful for actors with little experience. He respects actors and makes decisions based on their emotional state. So while he doesn't highlight this approach in the action cue, his thought process is exactly the same as Clint Eastwood's. 
And just a technical side note here. Even though I'm talking about the director calling action, it depends on their preference. Usually on big sets, calling action is the first AD's responsibility. Also, sometimes action is preceded by background action cue. For example, if extras must be in motion for the shot and it's usually called by the second AD. Set and background and action. Hey, we'll talk in a minute. Now going back to my music makeup video, I definitely didn't need to call action. Frankly, it made me feel stupid. I did it because it was expected and I wanted to feel like I'm directing something. But the truth is, no words can make you someone you're not. And I definitely wasn't a director back then. So what is the takeaway from this video? I guess there aren't any. And while someone may argue that no one should be in the position of having to learn how one director decided to fix something that isn't broken, I think it's good to take a step back before you get on your set and shout out CAMERA ACTIA by default. All I know is that when I get to direct one day again, I want to be mindful about it. Have fun calling action, just try not to scare the horses out of your actors. See you next time. Cut. <laughs> <laughs> Have a look at this shot from HBO series Chernobyl. <gasps> when I was a kid, I used to measure the distance from a storm. Every three seconds between lightning and thunder accounts for one kilometer. To be honest, I still do it to these days.